Hello everybody, welcome back to the workshop. So in this video, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be forging a fold form bowl. Now this is out of a piece of plate steel. This is mild steel and it is eighth inch thick or 3.175 mil, millimeter. And it is approximately seven inches across by seven inches or 175 mil by 175 mil. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and heat up just one corner of this. It doesn't have to be, you can choose how to do this however you like. I'm just going to show you the process of making a fold form bowl and then you can make whatever patterns you like out of it. So we'll get one corner of this good and hot. We don't want to heat up the rest of the plate, we just want to have one corner of this good and hot. Now this is where I'd like to mention that these, that making bowls or dishes or vessels like this with the fold forming can be quite lucrative if you're doing blacksmithing as a business. If you're doing blacksmithing as a business, you can take and do fold form bowls for approximately, you can get somewhere in the range of about $150 all the way in upwards, depending on size, of several, uh, say, probably, I would say your top end would be around $750 for a standard fold form bowl of this nature. Now this size here, I would recommend to sell it for somewhere around the $200 mark, 250, if you're in this for the market. And that's probably why you clicked on this video is to take in, because you saw a dollar sign in the twinkle and glint of your eye, and you saw that it, I was gonna teach you how to make some money at this. So again, I would recommend selling these for right around the, you know, 175 to about 250 for this size bowl that I'm doing here. Hopefully that math isn't too confusing. I should have thought that one through before I got onto it and told you all about it. But I'm gonna show you how we do it now. So I'm gonna grab a hammer. It's already nice and hot. And I'm shooting this in roughly real time to kind of show you how fairly simple this process is. So I'm gonna hammer it over the edge of the anvil and try to put close to a 90 degree angle on this, okay? And then I'm gonna go over 90, but not complete close it up. We just wanna hammer that edge to where we go over 90 a bit like so, and then that will end up getting straightened back out, and that's gonna take and create our first fold or our form. I'll go ahead and heat this back up, get it really nice and hot, right in that corner. We want it really nice hot in that corner. And then I'm going to drive that down on the edge of the anvil. So basically whenever you're fold forming something, you're creating a crease. And by creating that crease, when you fold it this way and you open it back up, you leave a ridge of material that has been forever changed because you've bent that grain structure really abruptly and you've created essentially a stress riser or line and we're using this to our advantage in the long run here so i'm going to go ahead and hammer on that you can see how it's starting to open that bowl back up okay and we'll hammer to the inside of the bowl Okay, so we've created a crease line across there. Now, one of the ways that you can increase this crease line is by heating this back up, getting a little sharper bend on it, and then really driving that material down. So we'll do that now. Get this nice and good and hot. And then we will drive that material. But in order to do that method, uh, I'm showing you two different types of methods. The first one here was at the edge of the anvil and it creates a fairly shallow crease. Again, it just disrupts that area and that comes out in your final finish. But now I'm gonna show you how you get it to be a really good stiff ridge that shows up in your later parts of your work. So we'll get this hot, we'll bend it over here like we did previously 
And then we're gonna take it over the vise and we're gonna upset that edge a bit. So let's go ahead and grab this out. Should be good and hot again. Pretty hot, it could be a little hotter. We'll bend this over again, right at that edge. Bend it back on itself and go ahead and drive it down along that edge. And go ahead and forge that edge down. Just like if you're putting a little bevel on it. Okay, now you can see it's folded completely flat. I will heat this up now and we will go to the vise. Okay, so I have this piece heated up. I'm coming out of the forge with it. And what we're going to do is we're going to lock it in the vise. We're going to try to take and clamp this in the vise to some degree, just like you see here. And I'm going to upset this edge a little more to square it up. And just like that, we hopefully you guys can see this. It's nice and squared up. And now we're ready to lock it into the vise on the next heat this way and use a small slitting chisel to open this up. We need to get this started to open before we go back to the anvil. So let me get this hot again. Grab a slitting chisel from over here. I know, bad show. If you don't know what a slitting chisel is, they look like this. They're basically, they have a curve to them. They're meant to do hot work and they're fairly narrow in the profile here. Uh, most slitting chisels or hot cut chisels are cut to a 30 degree angle versus like a cold chisel, which is a 60 degree angle. And so we're going to be able to slip this right in there and pry out. So that's what we're hoping to be able to do. We do need this to be good and hot though, as uh, you know, if it's too cold, you're going to really fight on this. We don't really want to fight this. We want to get that joint good and hot because we're asking it to do quite a bit of things. So we're good and hot here pretty hot right there at the joint where it needs to bend. So I'm going to clamp down on the piece that I just hammered on, pry out the plate a little bit, pry out with this corner using this slitting chisel as kind of a bit of a wedge. Again, we're just trying to get this started, get this process started in the right direction. So now we have enough to hook on the edge of our anvil and drive back to to create that ridge. So we'll be over at the anvil next. Okay, so I've got this piece nice and hot here. We're gonna bring it over to the anvil, hook it right on the edge, and we're gonna drive it back to ourselves. Just like so. Trying to aim for that edge that we've already upset. Hammer down in here a little bit. Hammer down there a little bit. Hammer straight down. Straighten out that edge a little bit. Again, the ideal here was to create a fold. You know, hopefully we have accomplished that mission. Okay, so there you go. Now you guys can see that fold there. Now you guys can see it buckled on the back side, and that's what you're wanting. So hopefully you all can see that just fine. Pretty simple, like I said, it's a pretty simple deal. Now we're gonna go around and we're gonna do that to the other corners as well. So I'm gonna continue along with that same type of folding technique there all the way around the corners and that is going to give us our fold form bowl. Now you don't have to do that, you could just do this on a corner um, or you could do the bowl completely in half or you could do a whole ripple effect all the way across. 
there's a lot of options there that you can do with fold forming. It's a pretty interesting technique. So I'll go ahead and do the rest of these folds. And in fact, to save time, I'm going to do that in a little bit of a time-lapse mo mode so you guys can kind of see the workflow there and uh, just you know speed this whole little process up. Again, you want to take short heats. You want to take nice short heats, nice short truncated heats on just the corners you want to fold and that way you're not bending the whole plate. You want the rest of the plate to stay pretty uh, rigid and motionless because if you start warping the rest of the plate, then stuff gets crooked, then you have to flatten it back out and things look less crisp. But basically we're gonna be doing the same exact process as we did in the vise, just over and over again until I get all four corners done. I'll be right back with you after we get that done. Okay everyone, now I've got this plate fully fold formed up, now it's time to turn it into a bowl. Now I'm using a swedge block just because this is convenient for me. I did a video not too long ago talking about this is one of the most handiest or most underrated tools in a blacksmith shop. I'll put a link to that video right up here and I'll also try to put one down in the description down below. But I'm using this because this is convenient. This thing has literally made me now to date, probably I would say a hundred grand I have made out of this swedge block right here. Uh, just in the amount of iron work that I have put through it, dishes and things of that nature. So I can't overstate it enough. These, these swedge blocks are an absolute dream. So if you can get a swedge block that has a nice bowl depression in it like this, six inches or larger, it can really take and help you out. Now, I'm using a wooden mallet. We're gonna use a wooden mallet because we wanna drive this down in here, but we don't wanna hammer on those ridges we just raised. If we hammer on those ridges we just raised, we're gonna end up wrecking them. They are a design element, so we wanna keep them around. So this is good and hot. Bring it out. I'm gonna give it a little scrape off to get any crud off the bottom of it. Try to get it centered up on the bowl and then hammer. Now we're gonna end up having to take a whole secondary heat on this to get it the rest of the way there. But as you can see, this is making a pretty decorative bowl. Kind of a neat look to it. Again, they sell well. They're a great thing to do for customers. It's a great way of adding value to the market space out there. If you're kind of thinking to yourself, huh, I'm out in my forge, what should I make today? You could do this within short order, have several of these made up, and uh, you know, with about a day's worth of work and finish work on them, and have something that somebody could truly enjoy for a lifetime. <coughs> so now at this stage, I'd like to mention, if you had a gas forge for all this, it won't necessarily make the work any easier. Some people say that it will, but it doesn't really, uh, because you really want a nice specific heat on the corners and you just can't get that with a gas forge. Does that mean you can't do it with a gas forge? No, it does not. I did fold form bowls for quite a few years with a gas forge. I had an old, uh, oh, I don't even know, just a little front load forge that only had one burner that came in from the top and I was able to be pretty successful with that. And uh, so, you know, you can do the same as well. You just have to work at it there kind of work with the tools that you got. You can certainly do this with the gas forge and just making those initial bends are harder. But then when it comes to final shaping, that's easier with the gas forge. 
So it really is just kind of a trade-off and it's just, you know, personal preference at that point of what you find to be easier. Now we got a little extra heat on this. Again, we're gonna try to rake off the bottom if there's any crud there. And we're gonna finish hammering this down. Okay, so there you have it, that's done. So now we gotta talk about finishing options. <coughs> there are certain times that I like to leave nothing but rough, like a rough forged finish and that's something the client wants. There's other times that you need to go the extra mile and polish and brass brush and do all sorts of different finishes to it. For this particular bowl, however, I'm going to leave everything as you see it except for the edges. All the edges I'm gonna take and go ahead and do a really nice polish to look on. I'll sand them with some 320 grit sandpaper and then I will buff them out to a mirror shine. Now, the flats here, if you sand those down, you can also polish those out. I haven't decided yet whether that's what I wanna do or if I just wanna leave those forged as is. I may sand them and polish them. I may just leave them as is right now. I kinda of like the looks of that. At any rate, whatever you do to it, you want to make sure that you coat these bowls for what they're going to be used for. So say if you're, you're going to make this and market this as a fruit bowl for yours, uh, for somebody. If it's a fruit bowl, it needs to take and have food, gr food grade oil or some sort of traditional finish put on it, like a wax finish of some sort, versus doing something like a spray on clear enamel finish. If it's going to be used, obviously if they decide to use it as a fruit bowl when they get it and it's got paint on it, that's, the, that's on them. But you have to decide what it's gonna be. If it's just gonna be kind of like a candy bowl, say you're just gonna throw candies in it that are in wrappers and stuff, you can do a painted finish. If you're gonna, uh, you know, you kinda wanna specify what the bowl can be used for, I guess I, what I'm trying to say in your listing, whatever you're making a listing about it. Uh, so that way people know what type of finish is applied to it. That way they can make the best healthy choice for themselves. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this. And I will put a, I will go ahead and put a picture at the end of this video so you guys can see how that looks. I've got to hurry up and get inside. It's nearly Christmas time here uh, in the blacksmith shop. So I hope everybody has or have had by the time this video comes out a wonderful Christmas and we should be coming right around the new year here as the recording of this video in 2018 cranking it all the way into 2019 but uh, anyways yeah let me know what you thought of this video down in the description down below and if you have any interest and you would like to purchase this bowl this bowl will be available at my website ChristCenteredIronworks.com uh, once I fully get it finished and touch mark and all that other stuff if you would like to take and pick it up there. Again, the link to that website will be in the description. That's where we put all of our information and helpful tips and hints. Anyways, without further ado, God bless you all. Thank you so much for watching and we will catch you on the next one.